bark. He's more of a barker than what she is. He'll bark and then she'll tell him off. And she'll come yes. back at us going, he's barking. And then I find, I don't know if that happens when you come in, but I'll come in to try to get him away from the window. And she'll be growling okay. and lunging at him a little bit. Well, they're both doing controlling behaviors. If you think about it, mm -hmm. um, it, it, this is part of the instability. You don't will often get dogs that go together in unison and saying we're part of the same team let's go together yep. they're challenging others but they're challenging each other as well yep. okay so it's actually a really common thing to walk past you know uh, on the walk go past someone's home see dogs fighting at a fence um after reacting to someone walking past with another dog or something like that you know they, they often turn on each other because of that instability, because of the fact they're both feeling territorial, they're both highly stimulated, overstimulated, um, and you get that sudden reactive um, response because one dog is saying to the other dog, you don't control things. The other one's saying, yes, I do. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the fact that um, they can't access and do something about that can be a little bit frustrating as well. The thing is, the dogs, like children shouldn't be able to control each other they shouldn't be in a position of being able to control each other or allowed to persist with controlling each other at the end of the day we don't want them getting success at controlling each other um it might happen you know in small parts from time to time but if we're witness to it and we don't do something about it that's going to set a bit of a standard for them yeah. okay I mean, the fact that he's relaxed here now after, you know, savagely going for me, um, you know, upon my arrival and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only about like four or five feet away from him is, is good and he's, he's completely relaxed, he's a down. I think that he, you know, he's just waiting. He's plotting. Waiting for his moment, yeah. Well, he's a thinker, we know Yeah, I think he plots. Yeah. Like, that's just me, he's like, well, well, you're sense of security for a couple of weeks. You can certainly, like, yeah, it can certainly seem like that for sure, especially yeah. when things are going well and then suddenly something um, happens. And I had this question about a year ago. I, I did an interview for um, for Channel 7. They asked me about this, this spate of recent dog attacks, why it, was, why it was happening, you know, why was there all these sudden dog attacks? And I said, there are no sudden dog attacks. It just appears sudden because people don't see the warning signs. The warning signs are very clear. Animals don't purposely create these, these mysteries so that they have to go through a horrible experience of attacking someone or something. They don't want to do that. That's not a good experience. Um, it happens as a result of a whole bunch of different experiences and interactions prior. And then even with those setting the tone you know creating the cause we have a trigger that sets off the event and with that trigger typically there's a lot of warning signs as well mm -hmm. that often get overlooked um, in terms of body posturing and positioning and um, you know some other signs with the ears and eyes and tail that kind of thing as well